The Democratic push for a cap-and-trade system seems to be losing steam this afternoon. A leading majority member of the Senate Energy Committee is leaving office, as is an expected Democratic yes vote on climate legislation. Now, energy and climate insiders are trying to figure out what these retirements will mean for the upcoming Kerry Graham Lieberman bill. Clean Skies Tyler Suters is here now to talk about the popular effects. So, Tyler, let's start with a very familiar face in energy circles. Byron Dorgan, what is next for him? Well, it sounds like more energy policy is on tap for him. He says he works to work on energy policy in the private sector, but to be perfectly honest here, the public sector and his job security probably had something to do with this decision. He is facing a very difficult re-election race, or at least he would have been if he were looking for another term. He sits now on the Energy Committee, also the Appropriations and Commerce and Science Committees. Dorgan has spent 30 years in Congress, including three terms in the Senate, six terms in the House before that. And he is very fond of calling his home state of North Dakota the Great Plains Energy Corridor. That's a reference to the potential for wind development there. He is a big proponent of that. In fact, the EIA says North Dakota is a substantial producer of wind energy. Dorgan also backs the new transmission that wind development would require. He is a fan of CCS technology, and keep in mind what his state has to do with the coal sector. The EIA says that North Dakota has 7% of recoverable coal at producing mines as of 2008. Now, Dorgan also co-sponsored with George Voinovich, a Republican, the National Security Energy Act of 2009. It has to do with new transmission for renewables, electrifying the transportation fleet, and also developing domestic fossil fuels. Susan, that's a clear reference to what his home state offers. That is the Bakken Shale there right, in North Dakota. Right, of course. Okay, so another name that is that is retiring is not a big one in energy circles is Christopher Dodd, mm -hmm. but he still was a reliable energy vote for the Democrats. Right, and on his website, he talks about climate change more so than I've heard him talk personally about the issue. It says, quote, we must act aggressively to combat climate change. His website goes on to say that a key component is to move our country toward the use of cleaner renewable forms of energy. He lists wind, solar, biomass, geothermal. He also lists fuel cells. Perhaps not coincidentally, there is a fuel cell company located in Connecticut that is now making the rounds or attempting to here in Washington in terms of the media circuit. Now, Senator Dodd also has a long list of energy-related federal grants to Connecticut entities. He is a five-term senator, considered a definite yes vote on cap-and-trade. This man, Byron Dorgan, is not, however. He's not a fan of cap-and-trade, although he does favor a cap on carbon. But according to the EIA, nearly all of the electricity generated in North Dakota is produced by coal-fired power plants. So where will Dorgan sit on a vote? Well, his pending retirement allows him to essentially vote his conscience when it comes to a climate bill and a cap-and-trade plan. But the question is, will he push for new wind development and new transmission by voting yes, or will he protect North Dakota's reliance on coal and vote no? Earlier today, I talked to an energy policy insider, someone who serves in the private sector in terms of the communications with the Hill, and he says Dorkin's retirement removes much of the leverage for the Senate effort to pass climate legislation involving new transmission or a renewable portfolio standard. And remember back in 2007, Dorgan's home state of North Dakota enacted a voluntary RPS, a 10% mandate by 2015. Voluntary alone, Susan, but even though Dodd is a definite yes, if this vote comes out in mm -hmm. 2010, I don't think you can count on Byron Dorgan, although I think he would potentially go for that cap and trade because of all the additional add-ons for renewable energy and transmission he wants to okay. see. So ending a difficult day for the Democrats. <laughs> Governor Ritter of Colorado also stepping right. down. He was also, uh, he also put a real premium on, on energy policy. Yeah, three losses in one day for Democrats. <laughs> ah, that it all comes so soon. And you're right, he has put a premium on energy, Susan. He's called his state a leader in energy and environmental policies. Uh, in terms of fossil fuels, Ritter has backed development of unconventional natural gas. He's also been pushing for support of CCS technology, but he's also a fan of renewables and alternative energies. He announced last year that his state will house the largest U.S. solar inverter facility in the entire country. He has also called for stricter regulation of oil and gas development. And during today's announcement, in fact, at the very outset, Ritter once again referred to his vision for new energy in Colorado. Five years ago, in the spring of 2005, I began running for governor of Colorado. My campaign theme, the Colorado Promise, was this deeply held belief that we as a state were not living up to our full potential. So we laid, we laid out a vision to create a different future for Colorado, a new energy economy that we could be proud of and could be the hub of an economy, an energy economy in this country. 
So guess whose name is now out there as Ritter's potential replacement? Yes, Interior Secretary Ken Salazar, a Colorado man. He also won statewide election in that state as a U.S. Senator, so it seems like he could potentially play well as a governor. And the Denver Post is now citing a source close to Salazar saying the secretary is, quote, under tremendous pressure and that state Democrats want him, quoting again, to fill the void that the governor's office now has in Colorado. An energy industry policy person I spoke with today said, interestingly enough, Susan, these secretaries usually last only about two years, wow. so maybe Secretary Salazar's time is coming due as well. It'll be interesting to see if that one works out. Mm -hmm. Tyler Suters, thanks for that. Of course.